Okay, in this video, we are going to uh, write a Taylor series for the function x minus one times natural log of x centered at x equals one. We're gonna do it two different ways. The answers look a little bit different and then we are gonna show that they're equivalent. So uh, let's get started. So the first method that I'm gonna use, uh, here is my plan. So uh, I'm gonna first focus in on the natural log of x and what I'll do is I will make uh, a series for that by using the table method where I find uh, figure out a pattern for the nth derivative, uh, evaluated at one, write out the series, and then see if I can write a summation. Um, and then after I have that series, I'm gonna take it and just multiply it by the quantity x minus one. So uh, let's do that. I'm gonna need a table. So uh, I think that by the time I get to the fourth derivative, I'll be able to figure out a pattern. So I'm gonna go from the fourth derivative to the nth derivative. The zeroth derivative of our function is just a natural log of x. I'm gonna find the derivative of that, which is one over x, but from experience, I know that it's better in this case to write it as x to the negative first. Now I'm just gonna keep power ruling, so negative x to the negative second, and then it'll be positive two x to the negative third, and then finally negative six x to the negative fourth. All right, so now we wanna look for a pattern in these. Um, so the zeroth derivative doesn't fit any kind of pattern, but that's fine. Uh, let's find a pattern for the first or greater derivative, I guess. So it alternates positive, negative, positive, negative. And when n is an odd number, the derivative is positive. So I'm gonna throw in a negative one to the n plus one. So when n is one or three, I'll get a positive. When it's two or four or any even number, I'll get a negative, so that works. Then those coefficients, so uh, in front of the x, I have a one, a negative one, a two, a negative six, so one, one, two, six. That reminds me of factorials. So I'm thinking it's like n factorial, but if you look, uh, six is three factorial, two is two factorial, one is uh, one factorial. So really I want n minus one factorial. And then there's still like a x to the negative n. I'm gonna substitute one, so that part doesn't really matter, but let's sub in one for each of these. And I'm doing this so that I can write some terms of the series. Okay, so I'm gonna go term by term and just write out the series. So it's the nth derivative evaluated at one, x minus one to the n divided by n factorial. So I always write out all of them, even if something is zero. So zero, x minus one to the zero over zero factorial. It's just so I don't forget that term and then mess up kind of somewhere along the line. Um, and then it's gonna be plus one x minus one to the first over one factorial. And that'll be minus one x minus one to the second over two factorial. And then uh, I guess I should just keep going. So in general, I'm gonna have uh, the nth derivative, which is negative one to the n plus one uh, times n minus one factorial. I'll have x minus one to the n, and then I'll have divided by n factorial. So that's kind of the nth term. So let me write this thing as a summation now. So as a summation, the first thing I'm gonna notice um, is that uh, this first term here is just zero. So I don't really wanna start there, so let's just get rid of that. So I wanna generalize from here. So I'm gonna have, uh, I'm really just looking at the general term, like after I noticed that the first term was zero, now I'm looking at that general term. So negative one to the n plus one, n minus one factorial, x minus one to the n over n factorial. Um, Notice though that n minus one factorial over n factorial is just one over n. So we can write this as negative one to the n plus one, x minus one to the n, all over n. Okay, so that's my series for the natural log of x, but I want x minus one times the natural log of x. So I'm gonna take the thing that I just wrote, that summation, and multiply it by x minus one. So we're looking for this, and I'm taking x minus one times that summation. So that'll look like this. If you look, you see that x minus one on the outside and the x minus one to the n on the inside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply into the summation and I will end up with the sum from one to infinity, negative one to the n plus one, the quantity x minus one to the n plus one, and then all over n. Okay, so this is my first version of the series for the quantity x minus one times the natural log of x centered at x equals one. All right, let's do it a slightly different way. And you just have to decide which way you think is easier. So my plan for this 
is I'm going to, uh, I know that the derivative of natural log of x is one over x, and I know that that's sort of similar to the sum of a geometric series. So I'm going to write a series for the derivative of natural log of x. And then since I wrote a series for the derivative, I will then integrate that series to get back up to a series for the natural log of x. And then I will take that series and I will multiply it by x minus one again. All right, so that's my game plan. Let's see if we can do it. So first I'm gonna find the derivative, which uh, hopefully you definitely know. So my derivative here is one over x. I'm gonna rewrite this so that it looks a little more like a geometric. I'm gonna use the plus one minus one trick. So I'm gonna do that in the denominator. So I'm gonna say one over one minus one plus x, right? One minus one is zero, so it's still one over x. I'm gonna rearrange this uh, because I want a quantity x minus one for my geometric series. Like I know I want that to be sort of the ratio. So I'm just gonna rearrange that denominator and make it one over one plus x minus one. If I were to factor a negative one out of the quantity x minus one, I would uh, kind of have what exactly looks like a geometric series to me. So I'm gonna do that. So I'll make it negative quantity, negative quantity x minus one. And now it's perfectly geometric, right? So I get r is negative quantity x minus one. So r to the n is quantity negative one to the n times the quantity x minus one to the n. So if you don't believe that, go back to the previous step and just like distribute and you will see that you get back to uh, the previous fraction, which gets back to the previous fraction, which ultimately gets back to one over x. So all of these things are equivalent. Um, what's interesting though is now my series is starting at zero. Um, I need to integrate this series. So we're gonna integrate because this is equal to the derivative of natural log of x. So let's integrate and see what happens. So I'll get natural log of x is equal to uh, there's gonna be a constant of integration, so I usually put that before the summation, so C plus. Uh, when you're integrating, you don't change the index, so it's gonna still start at zero. Um, and then negative one to the n doesn't have any x's in it, so it's gonna stay negative one to the n. Uh, x minus one to the n does have an x, uh, so I'm just, uh, it's like a perfect reversing the chain rule thing, so I'm gonna add one and then uh, divide by n plus one. So. I'll get x minus one to the n plus one, reversing the power rule, and then divided by n plus one. Okay, so we have this. I do need to worry about that c, but since the natural log of one um, is equal to zero, I know that c is equal to zero, because if you plug one in for x, you just get the sum of zero. Uh, all right, so natural log of x looks like um, this. So the natural log of x is the sum from zero to infinity, negative one to the n, quantity x minus one to the n plus one over n plus one. Now I wanna take this series and multiply it by x minus one. So we're looking for our series for the quantity x minus one times natural log of x. So that'll look like, uh, it's just gonna be the summation times x minus one, so we don't really need to watch that. Uh, now I'm gonna do the same thing. I have an x minus one on the outside as a factor. I'm gonna bring it inside and I will end up with the sum from zero to infinity, negative one to the n, quantity x minus one to the n plus two over n plus one. So that's what I've ended up with this time. So I got two series that look pretty similar, but not exactly the same. So what we wanna do now is compare them, right? So our first method gave us this, where we started at one, we have an n in the denominator, an n plus one is our exponent. Um, our second method gave us this, where we're starting at zero, we have an n plus one in the denominator, an n plus two in the numerator, uh, in the exponent, I should say. So uh, if you're not sure if these are equivalent, just start plugging in. So for this series, we'll get, when n is one, we get x minus one squared, then minus x minus one cubed over two, and so on. So we'll get this, and then ultimately it's just gonna go forever. Um, I wanted to do a couple terms just so we could like be sure that they're the same uh, for this next series. This, well, this was one, two, three, four. <laughs> okay, for the second series, start at zero and you get this and you get this and you can see if you compare them, you're getting the same terms. It's just that these two series are indexed uh, differently. So what we're gonna do is re-index the series. 
So I'm going to take the series that we got from method one, I'm going to turn it into basically the series from method two. And then I'll take the series from method two and turn it basically into the series from method one, because you never know which one you might need to do. So uh, for method one, I know that uh, I want to turn it into the series from method two. So I want to start at zero instead of starting at one, but n currently starts at one. So what I'll do is I'm just going to let u equal n minus one. If u is equal to n minus one, then that means that n is equal to u plus one. And also when n is equal to one, as in our series for method one, so when n is equal to one, u is going to be equal to n minus one, which is zero. So I'm going to make all the substitutions into the series that I got from method one. So here's the series. So I'm going to replace uh, n equals one with uh, u equals zero and then to infinity, because infinity minus one, so infinity. Um, so I'll get negative one to the replace n with u plus one. So I get, uh, instead of n plus one, I have u plus one plus one, so I have u plus two. And the key thing there is that I, uh, I could have u plus two or I could just have u because uh, two is an even number, so it's not really like doing anything there. And then I'll get x minus one to the Instead of n plus one, I'll have u plus one plus one, so u plus two. And then in the denominator, I'll have, instead of n, I'll have u plus one. And then if we look at the two series, you can see this series and this series are definitely the same. The only little difference there is the exponent for negative one. Um, but if you just like test out a few values, you'll see that those are always generating the same thing anyway. Um, so these are equivalent, so we successfully re-index that. I'm going to do it again and turn method 2 into method 1. It's really similar. Um, so I'm going to, so method 2 starts at 0, but I want to start at 1, so I'm going to let u equal just n plus 1. Because that's a function that will force it forward by 1, because that's what I really want to do. So again, that means that n is equal to u minus 1 when n is equal to uh, 0, u will be equal to 1. And that's the whole idea. So we'll take our series that we had from method 2, and we're going to turn it into the series from method 1. So make our substitution. So n equals 0 goes to u equals 1. Infinity still infinity. We'll have negative 1 to the, and then instead of the n, we'll have u minus 1. So again, you get this slight difference, but as long as they differ by an even number, it's fine. And uh, n minus one and u minus n plus one and u minus one differ by two, so not a problem. Quantity uh, x minus one to the so we're replacing n with uh, u minus one, so u minus one plus two is just u plus one, and then divided by we have n plus one, but that's just u. And if you compare this to what we got from method one, you will see that those are the same except for the exponent of negative one. That tends to end up different when you do this process, um, but they alternate the same way, right? When you plug in values of uh, u for the bottom thing or n for the first thing. Um, all right, so that's it. We did the problem two different ways, both of them totally valid. We got two things that look a little different and we had to re-index them to show that they were the same, which sometimes you need to do. Um, I hope you found this helpful and good luck.